All right, so here's something that the folks at Blend Foundation have just published, which is pretty interesting, and it has to do with the online asset workshop report. And so we'll be following the trends of the assets, the asset browser, the brushes, what libraries are, what extensions are. And it's pretty interesting to see that during the July workshop, there's a couple of things that we discussed that has to do with the scope of the project when planning to follow up on the brush asset system, which is a project that they've just announced that is finally available and will be coming to Blender 4.3. And we're going to be talking about that in a bit. Meanwhile, for the online asset workshops, a couple of things were discussed, and these include the online asset library, extension and asset libraries, variants, representation, and versions, organizing assets, deliverables, and next steps. So first off, for the online asset libraries, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. They're kind of looking at making some things out of the box experience. And this means that we might be getting some asset libraries called online essentials. And these online essentials will be containing CC0 assets, which probably might be coming from the folks at Polyheaven. And I do believe that some of these assets might also be coming from the demo section of blender.org. For the online asset libraries, they're also looking at integrating the asset system with the internet. So unlike what we have right here, where you have to go over to edit, go over to preference, go right here where you have your file part, we probably will be having something that will be reading from the internet just like we have with the extensions. And speaking about things that we'll be reading from the internet, just like we have with the extensions, the extensions and asset libraries actually discusses that even more. So we all know that extensions and asset libraries have been pivotal in expanding Blender's functionality. And conceptually, asset libraries can be seen as a type of extension. And that is why they might be adding a new asset library tab. So by default, if you go over to edit, go over to preference, you would notice that we've got get extensions. So probably might be getting under the tab here, which might be called online extensions or get assets. So probably from there, you should be able to find a truckload of assets, just like we can find a truckload of extensions. And most probably we'll also have another dedicated page, just like we have with extension website, where you can download these assets yourself and use them however you choose. And that is something that I believe might be coming soon. There's also the conversation about variance representation and versions, and this deals with the fact that one asset can have various types of variants. And this can include, you know, new, damaged, and old, all the way to dry and wet, down to different colors. And of course, they're also looking at representations, which deals with level of detail and also the sizes of a particular texture. This will also deal with variants of a particular mesh. Say, for example, a mesh gets updated and this would have different versions. And that is how I kind of think that they're looking at this. Meanwhile, there is something that is actually happening with all this stuff. So if we simply go all the way down, we can see that the existing asset system is limited to one variant representation and version per asset. However, they're kind of thinking about how they can make this thing work so that you don't get restricted by this. As this has a profound implication for asset integration in Blender, even affecting its definition. Every other thing has to do with the definition of what an asset is, the way they're thinking about organizing this asset, and also deliverables just to keep track of progress and encouraging community development. These proposed deliverables are outlined in the issue tracker, which if you like to see this, you can simply go over to link in the description. They'll bring you right here where you can see all of the things that are going on here and the plans of every single thing that has to do with the online asset. So from improving asset management and experiences, all the way to online asset libraries, down to targets that still needs better definition, all these are contained within the online asset library workshop. Meanwhile, brush assets are out. So we already talked about this one some time ago. It is pretty interesting to see that this is coming to Blender 4.3. And for those who like to experiment with this, all you need to do is go over to blender.org, go over to where you've got download, go all the way down here, go over to experimental, and right over here where we have the branches, you will be able to take advantage of the brush asset project. So this is currently available and you can play with it. So with what we've got here, if you simply drag out a new panel, we've already covered this in a previous video. So this is just a recap. You would notice that now we've got those sweet essentials. As if you simply go over to the release note of Blender 4.3, scroll all the way down to where you get to see sculpt paint and texture, you would notice that we have it right here. So this seems to be coming and it's looking pretty good. How you work with this is pretty simple. And of course, I would like to suggest one other cool way that, and hopefully the folks at Blender Foundation might do well to implement it. The first things which you'll notice is if you go over to the sculpting mode, you no longer have those brushes. You now have just one brush and you can select from any of these brushes that exist. Say for example, you like to paint in that blob right there. Let's go ahead and increase this. 
and we can paint in that blob and of course we can do some more things like this so in terms of working with it you do have all of these brushes you can simply filter these brushes however you want if you just want to focus on working with the cloth brushes you can turn that on and you only have that so in this case once we go over and select the cloth brush we can select the cloth brush and of course we can start playing with it and wherever you have a texture and painting stuff there is a brush for that and for the texturing how we can get going is to click down go over here add a simple base and we can set the color all the way to white click on apply and we can start painting so you do have these brush tools which are super cool you can of course go ahead and make variations of what you want say for example you know you want to make a change or you want to make a copy as this has been said to be able to do all that and we've tried that before you can simply duplicate this and rename it however you want so i can rename this you know uh paint texture underscore one and this gets to be saved under the brush catalog click the save button and from here we can start making definitions of that particular brush that we just selected so once we have this brush and we start working with it that is basically what we get and if you like to filter this based on the current project that you're working on you can simply do that by clicking right here go over to the user library and you have it right here and this is basically how you make your brushes and you know customize those brushes however you want now there is just one thing that i kind of think might be super cool for user experience and it is pretty simple so you know how we have the asset browser and you can simply drag and drop things on any part of your model or maybe any part of your scene when working with asset browser this is cool however i do have a suggestion which I think might be useful. So the 3D cursor is an amazing tool. So this tool just simply allows you create anything anywhere. You almost get the gist of what I'm saying. And what I'm asking for is not so much if it's possible to simply place the 3D cursor anywhere and double click on any of these things and they apply or appear there, that will be awesome. Another thing I would like to suggest is this. Now you guys will get the gist once I start talking about it. If we go over to the sculpt room, see how things change and we're right here in the sculpt room. It's a one click button action. And once we go over to the modeling, things automatically change. It's a one click button action as well. If we go over texture paint, things change. It's a one click button action as well. I would love to see a situation, you already get the gist. I'd love to see a situation where we can simply go over to the mesh sculpt, double click on any of this and jump right into the sculpting room and start working there this would save a lot of clicking time so you can simply just double click and this automatically switches to start sculpting you probably can just dock this by the side all right so maybe you just go ahead and dock this by the side double click on that switch to that brush start drawing double click switch to that brush start doing stuff double click switch to this and start doing stuff that will save a lot of time and i believe artists or people working with these things will definitely love it so those are my suggestions for the brush asset system and also for all of the new asset tools that will be coming to Blender pretty soon. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. A lot of things to think about and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.